All right, what is up everyone? Welcome back to the channel. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Jordan and I'm a first year medical student in the state of New Jersey. So today is actually Tuesday. It's a bit of a short week because yesterday was Memorial Day, so we had off for that. I went home for Memorial Day weekend just because it was a three day weekend, had a little bit more time to travel back to Maryland and spend time with family. So if you haven't seen that video, go check it out. This week we are finishing pulmonology. So today we had sessions on sleep apnea and lung cancer. Honestly, some pretty interesting topics. Our sleep apnea lecture was two hours long, which I thought was gonna be a little too long to learn about sleep apnea, but we learned a lot of just general sleep medicine, uh, the different stages of sleep, what happens to your body in terms of your brain waves, hypoxia, all that stuff. So that was a pretty interesting lecture. And then our lung cancer lecture was also really good too. One of my favorite professors taught it. She's really great about making clinical vignettes so everything sticks a lot better. So in the whole two hour lecture, we just only went over three cases, but she did it in a way that it covered the three biggest lung cancers in some pretty great detail. And she also had just like general lecture components, but for the most part, it's just case-based learning. So pulmonology was a little bit rough to start. We were coming right off of a cardiology exam with no days off and had to learn the normal anatomy and physiology of the lungs, which isn't the easiest thing. But as we've gone through the weeks, things have started to click a little better. To me, it's a lot easier to understand the normal physiology once you're incorporating pathophysiology like different diseases because then you're able to compare what the normal is and what the abnormal is so like i said this is our last week we only have a few lectures left so it's pretty crazy to be almost done with pulmonology All right, what's up everyone? It is Thursday night. Wanted to check in and let you know how this past few days went. Honestly, been pretty exciting. Wednesday, yesterday, we didn't have any lectures. We just had a clinical skills session that was about four hours long. It was called Approach to Dyspnea, which is just shortness of breath. So usually in these sessions, we have to research a few different common causes of a certain thing. So We've had an approach to fever, approach to cough, approach to chest pain. So we usually research these different topics in pairs and then present them in our small group and just sort of talk about them. And then recently what we've been doing after that is we go into our high fidelity simulation studios. So it's basically a room that simulates like a hospital room, has a really high tech mannequin laying in a hospital bed. It has a vitals monitor. A bunch of cameras because there's actually actors on the other side of like a one-way mirror so they're observing everything listening to us and they're able to respond as the patient so it was only our second time doing that so it's still pretty new to us but i think it's a really great learning tool so basically the way it works is we walk in it's usually like an er situation where the patient came in uh was triaged by a nurse so we have sort of a basic note so a few people will read that note while the other two people go and attend to the patient, start asking them questions. The really great thing about these mannequins is they can play different heart and lung sounds, so you can actually do a physical exam on them. They even have pulses, so some clinical findings can be like the absence or a weak pulse. But basically for our first patient, they were seen yesterday in an urgent care for some sort of infection, cough, shortness of breath. So they were given amoxicillin, just an oral antibiotic, and sent home because they had a suspected pneumonia. So they went home, took their medication, but the next day they were feeling even worse, shortness of breath was worse, they just really felt under the weather, so they decided to come to the ER. So we did the physical exam, sounded like there was some decreased breath sounds on the left side, and then we got a chest x-ray that sort of lined up with that. It looked like there was either fluid in the lung itself, or what's called an effusion, so the lung has a lining called the pleura and there are basically two layers to it. So when fluid gets in between those layers, it's called a pleural effusion. So 
based on the chest x-ray and the physical findings, we kind of thought that that's what the patient had. So, you know, one of the treatments for that, you basically stick a needle in and pull the fluid out. However, the patient started to decompensate. So they already didn't have great vitals, but sort of they flipped the switch and their blood pressure dropped, heart rate was going super high, their O2 saturation was dropping, so we needed to sort of act quickly. So we immediately sort of tried to get the patient to respond to us. We're talking to them, sort of tapping them on the shoulder, and they just weren't responding, and the mannequin's eyes actually closed. So that sort of told us things were really wrong, and they had an altered mental status, which, depending on the situation, can be a pretty big emergency. So what we had to do is intubate the patient. So that was sort of our test to see if we knew that if a patient is decompensating pretty fast and they have some sort of like pulmonary issue and they aren't responsive anymore, that's, it's very likely that they're going to lose their airway and not be able to breathe, so we're gonna have to intubate them. That was that case, and then our second one was a younger patient coming in for an asthma exacerbation, so basically just a really bad asthma attack. Um, so we gave him like sort of the first line bronchodilators and steroids, and it helped a little bit, but really wasn't getting where we needed to. Um, also gave them like 100% oxygen, which again, made their O2 sat go up a little bit, but really not what we wanted. It was still sitting around like 80%, so this patient was still relatively stable, was responding to us, everything like that, so we didn't feel like intubation was needed, so we put them on a positive air pressure machine or a CPAP, which is most, which is most commonly used for sleep apnea, but it can also be used in these situations. So I think this is why they picked these two scenarios. They're sort of similar, uh, similar presentations, patient can't breathe, giving them oxygen not really working, but the big differentiator is if they're stable or not. You know, the first patient was losing consciousness, blood pressure was dropping rapidly, so that's more of an emergent thing, which is why you would need to intubate, but the asthma patient, not as sick. So we can try the CPAP, which is much less invasive, instead of intubating them. So we put the CPAP on, uh, stats normalize in like 30 seconds, everything's great but then they drop again. So we asked to get a chest x-ray and based on the chest x-ray, it looked like they had a pneumothorax. A pneumothorax is basically a collapsed lung. So one risk with a CPAP is you are forcibly pushing air in. When you normally breathe, it's more of a passive thing where your diaphragm contracts and just kind of pulls the air in as opposed to something pushing the air in from the outside. So that's what the CPAP does and you run risk of poking a little hole in the lung if there's a weak spot. So unfortunately, that's what happened to the patient and that's why they started to decompensate. So the treatment for that is you have to put in a chest tube and sort of release the air that has been filling the chest cavity. That was the end of that encounter. I honestly thought that the two different situations were really good. I learned a lot. It was honestly really nice, especially with the first patient, to do a physical exam and actually compare like, oh, the left side has definitely decreased breath sounds, it's dull to percussion versus the right side is completely normal. And I also think it's helpful to be put into those sort of emergent situations when there's really nothing on the line and you know you're not going to hurt anyone. I think it's really going to help us when we're actually in that situation in clerkships. So that was all yesterday and then today just normal class. We had a session on lower respiratory infections, so pneumonia, bronchitis, that kind of stuff, and one session on pulmonary hypertension. The fun thing that happened today was me and like 20, 25 classmates all went rock climbing. So it was a joint event between our lifting club, which I'm a leader of, and actually our snowboarding club, which um, some of the leaders are just really avid rock climbers. We don't actually have a rock climbing club, which we should probably start, but um, like I said, it was a joint event. We pulled some of our funds that we get and bought a bunch of free passes for whoever wanted to come. So it was a really great event. It's probably the first time that I've been rock climbing since I was like 10 at some random birthday party. So it was definitely hard, but something that I might wanna start getting into. It is a little expensive, but uh, the day passes on a certain day with a student discount, it's not that bad. So probably, you know, once every few weeks, I'll go back there. Alright, it is Sunday night and I just wanted to sort of wrap up the week. It was a boring, very productive weekend, which is what I needed after last weekend. I did still study a lot last weekend, but it was a lot of fun. 
but I just really needed to focus and make sure I was really good on all the pulmonology stuff because we're already done with it. It's pretty crazy to me that we're done with pulmonology in three weeks. I mean, a lot of the content does connect to like cardiology and renal that we're starting next, but just the fact that we're already done with that whole organ system is pretty wild. So we do start renal next week and we only have three weeks for that as well. So starting to get a little nervous. Renal is sort of classically one of the hardest subjects that you learn in medical school because even just the normal physiology is so complex. With pulmonology, like, the normal function of the lungs isn't that crazy or hard to understand, but with renal it is. Just to give an example, um, I use Boards and Beyond a lot for like a third party resource to sort of prep for the lectures. And for pulmonology, the sort of normal physiology video was 13 minutes long, but for renal it's split up into three different videos that total over an hour and a half. So that kind of shows that we are in for a lot. Like most of our classes have been going, um, this first week is mostly just normal stuff. I, th I think Thursday and Friday we might start learning about some disorders, but the first few days are usually just like the normal histology, anatomy, physiology. And I've already watched a bunch of those Boards and Beyond videos, so I feel prepared, but still a little worried because it is potentially the hardest subject of medical school and we have to do it in three weeks. But the fact that we only have three weeks and then one more week for an exam means that in four weeks I'll be in M2, which is really wild to think about as well. We have sort of a two and a half week summer break after this exam, and then we're right back. And then we'll be M2s. This year did honestly fly by. I think next week is our graduation, and to think that that's going to be us in three years is really exciting, and I know it's going to be here before we know it. All right, well, that is going to do it for today's video. If you enjoyed, please be sure to leave a like below and subscribe if you want to see videos like this in the future. Thanks, and I will see you in the next one.